I'm Nathan Scott, welcome to Changemakers. An initiative from Australian Wool Innovation, bringing you the best research from around the country. We all want to be better sheep producers, but the only way you can be better is to change. If we keep doing things the same way we've always done them, we'll keep getting the results we've always got. That's why we're here, Changemakers. Did you know that we can improve lamb marking percentage simply by reducing lambing mob sizes? Research led by Australian Wool Innovation in collaboration with a range of industry partners found that twin bearing ewes benefit the most. Reducing your lambing mob size by 100 ewes can increase your marking percentage by 4.5%. But will it make you more money? The simple answer is yes. The use of permanent subdivisional fencing will improve your lamb marking percentage and improve pasture utilisation, both of which contribute to profitability. But it doesn't actually have to be that difficult or expensive. The use of temporary electric fencing can allow you to reduce your mob size while keeping your stocking rates up on your best lambing paddocks. It doesn't have to be complicated, it just needs to work. And it will produce immediate results. This is irrespective of breed, stocking rate, lambing paddock density and location. This research was conducted in both pastoral and high rainfall zones, producing consistent results. So what is it about mob size that's so important? It's actually about the number of lambs born on any given day across a paddock. And the reason this is important is before a ewe goes into her own active labour, she will start looking for the smell of afterbirth. Her hormones kick in and drive her to go looking for the smell of afterbirth. Now this is a fantastic mechanism because it means when she has her lamb, she immediately turns around and cleans it. The problem is it kicks in a bit too early and that will cause her to visit birth sites across the paddock. She'll start trying to clean lambs that aren't hers and she creates confusion and that's where some of the mismothering comes from. Simply by reducing our mob size, we can help reduce the number of birth sites she has access to. People often ask, what is the ideal twin lambing mob size? And there is no simple answer, other than to say, as small as possible. We know that reducing twin lambing mob size will help. The question isn't about whether you should reduce mob size. The question is, by which method? If you've never used temporary electric fencing within your own flock, I really encourage you to give it a go. It provides a really cost-effective means of reducing lambing mob size. And we know heavily pregnant ewes aren't that interested in jumping, so a couple of hot wires can do a great job of containing them. And even if the odd one does get through, does it really matter? For more information on the impacts of reducing lambing mob size on your flock, click on the link below. You'll find specific information relating to the return on investment that can be achieved and the ideal mob size based on the level of infrastructure you're implementing. I just want to leave you with one final question. How many lambings do you have left in you? And can you afford to miss this opportunity to make improvements? Even if you're already achieving great lamb survival results, we know whatever we do well today, we can do better tomorrow.